my elders, my great-grandparents, my great-great-grandparents took care of this earth and at some stage in my life, I'm one of those people that became responsible to help take care of her. My children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren are going to have to take up that responsibility of preserving for us this great place that we just borrow. I borrow of the earth and I pass it on. The homelands of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai tribes supported the Salish, Ponderé, and Kootenai people from time immemorial. In 1855, the Treaty of Hellgate reduced tribal homelands from over 20 million acres to a one and a quarter million acre reservation. A treaty abrogation in 1910 opened the reservation to white homesteading, further reducing tribal homelands and creating a conflicting cultural, social, and political landscape that still echoes across the reservation today. I come from a long line of strong Salish women, and I'm very thankful for that. I've been working to protect this landscape for over a decade but I come from generations that have cared for it for thousands of years. Going back a generation, my tupia, my great-grandmother, was one of the three yayas that protected the Mission Mountain Tribal Wilderness Area. When Ashley Lake's logging unit was proposed, The three Yayats, as well as community members, formed a Save the Mission Mountains group to help create the Mission Mountain Tribal Wilderness Area. The three Yayas came in to remind Tribal Council the importance of the wilderness and why we need to preserve it. So when they were done, they remained standing and they informed Council that they wouldn't leave until the decision was made. And I'm very thankful for our elders to have battled to preserve that for us. The tribes have had a long history of stewardship. Early on in the 60s, we were already talking about protecting the grizzly bear long before the Endangered Species Act protected them we were protecting them. We've taught one another through the oral tradition how to take care of the earth, how not to be greedy with the earth, how to give back to the earth. So I was taught from very little when I got medicinal roots that I was to put tobacco in the ground where I took the roots from. It was part of honoring, it was a part of recognizing that. In some way we paid for it. Living in the place where you know your ancestors have lived, where your creation stories are, you develop an intimate relationship, a loving relationship, because it's taken care of me. It took care of my ancestors. This land is still beautiful because our ancestors took care of it. And then they pass that responsibility on to us to take care of it. We manage people and educate people to coexist with wildlife. It is amazing to me with how many grizzly bears we have on the landscape. They coexist with people just fine. It was
was a 10-year battle with Montana Department of Transportation to not allow four lanes of traffic to go through. And that was to protect our wildlife. The tribes were very adamant about thinking about the landscape as a whole. How do we want this concrete, this asphalt, these metal barriers to influence what is occurring on our lands? Will animals be isolated on one side of the highway or the other? They need to be able to move across a landscape and find food, find mates, to keep that genetic diversity alive. We have 42 wildlife crossing structures to date on the Flathead Reservation. The amount of deer that walk through these structures, we might be up to 100,000. Every time we're able to keep an animal safe from crossing that road, that's a win for us. For our culture, for our biological diversity on the reservation. We often think of land taking care of us with food, but land also takes care of us emotionally and spiritually. So there are places that I go to pray there are places that I go if I'm not feeling well or if I'm facing a difficult time. So the land supports us in that way too. Really, it's everything to us. It's our church, it's our store, it's our home, it's our sanctuary. The tribe was one of the first in the country to redesignate air quality standards on the reservation to pristine air quality. We began to use the Environmental Protection Act to move forward with water quality. And of course we had to defend our right to do that. My ancestors and relatives have been caring for and protecting this small piece of our homeland through generations of adversity and outside resistance. We live the lesson of reciprocity. We understand the miracle of a tree to give us breath. We recognize the beauty and importance of life's diversity. Today, the trumpeter swans and peregrine falcons fly here again. The grizzly bears remain. The small hope in this moment asks us to take action for our children, our grandchildren, and the unborn. The earth is the most humble, the most humble entity there is. Look at all that we throw at it. Look at all the abuse the earth takes and heals it, and refines it, cleans it, and then makes things grow again. And this song is about honoring that. Lemlinch <laughs> 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 <laughs>